Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Weir, and I gotta tell you, I love life. But when I'm not being a husband, a father, a grandfather, an author, or a practicing chiropractor, I'm the host of the television show, Loving Life with Dr. Tim Weir. I love to cook. I love to travel. I like to spend time with people who do what they love and love what they do. Join me and Elvis for the next 30 minutes as we help you discover how to love life. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Loving Life. We've got some great things planned for you, so you don't want to change your channel. You want to stay right where you're at and find out how you too can start loving life. Doing what you love and loving what you're doing. That's the whole show today. I'm with Charlie Khalil from Southern Classic Cars, right here in Wake Forest. Charlie, you've been here in this location five years. Almost five years. How did you get into doing this? Oh gosh, back in the early 70s, just buying classic cars. Just keep it, I had, I've had classic cars all my life. Um, I was in, actually in the grocery business for like 39 years, but after retiring, um, I took over a business downtown for Scott Brown, Wake Forest Classic Cars and run it for three years and I wanted to take the business to the next level. The other building would only hold 15 cars. This building holds 62 cars. Wow. So, so you, you said, did you get old cars and redo them? Is that what I you did? I used to, yes. But today it's easier to find a classic car already built, already done, a lot cheaper than trying to restore a car today. And you love doing this, don't I you? I love doing it, yes. That is so cool. Yes. That is really cool. And here's an important, I just picked up on this. You retired, but you didn't stop. Right. Yes. And that's really important for people to do. Yes. Is don't just, you know, go out and play golf and find something to do that right. you love to do. I look forward to coming to work every day. Oh, that's a key. If you're not doing what you love and love what you're doing, yes. if you don't get up in the morning and want to do what you, you're not going to make yeah. it. Yeah. I want to be here every day. That is so cool. Now, people can come here. Doesn't cost anything doesn't cost to anything come in come here. In. Right. You can bring your... Bring your dad, bring your kids. Uh, I'm open Tuesday through Saturday, uh, 9 to 4. And sometimes Mondays, about half a day. But uh, I'm not hard to find. I'm here. Website. I have a website, southernclassiccarsnc.com. Uh, shows all our cars. We actually got 20 more cars than what we have in here. That is so cool. So we have about 80-some cars all together. Can we just walk around and see some of yes, them? Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's go. This one we just got yesterday, 71 Volkswagen. My mother used to have one like this, except it had that auto shift thing on it. I don't know how she ever drove that thing. She could barely drive a regular car. You never know what you'll find in here. You know, we're not just classic cars. We do a variety of different cars. Well, I didn't tell you this. I'm just being in here kind of has stirred up some juices, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave here and go to Spinner's Grill because that's the old 50s type grill. I eat there quite often. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you, please come back. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be right back at Spinner's. We're spending this whole time talking about people who do what they love and love what they do. People who step out of the boat and start their own businesses or do whatever it takes to uh, have fun. And I'm with Austin Overstreet here at a place called Spinner's Grill. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's great. Thank you. Now, you started here in 2006. Yes, sir. Why'd you do it? Why did I do it? Well, I got to a situation in my career to where, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to die wondering what if. So I found a restaurant that appealed to me. My family uh, had the demographics and customer base that I wanted to get involved with. So we plunged in and, and, and been happy ever since. I love that, not wanting to die of what if. Correct, yeah. So many people are so reserved that they don't do, ever do anything. Yep. So. It's been hard. Uh, obviously, you, you learn something every day, but I'm, 
glad we did it. Yeah. Yep. And, and I think that's an important concept for people to understand that it's not easy having your own business. It's not easy doing this stuff. But the rewards are so much worth. Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, absolutely. It's really cool. Listen, we, we come here all the time as a family. And uh, we love this place. If I were to ask you, what is your signature thing that you sell? Signature would be our burgers. We have Raleigh's Best and Biggest Burgers. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy one here shortly. Okay. Uh, we just serve half pound Black Angus cheeseburgers. Uh, mm. 20 different ways. We have the three and a half pound Buster Burger, which if you'd like to try it, be my guest. Wow. Uh, but it, it's burgers, one out of three people will order one and uh, this is where they come when they, they feel like having a good old fashioned burger. We, uh, we do a full ice cream parlor. We uh, give kids free ice cream with every meal. Great place to bring the family. Yes, yes, that's our goal. I'm hungry. Excellent. I'm eating now. Are you going to order anything? Yeah, I got a, I got another burger coming. Oh, I feel pretty hungry a today. Small burger? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Oh my God! Look at the size of that. This is our Buster Burger. It's a three and a half pound mammoth burger. It's the biggest one in Raleigh. Single patty. <laughs> if you're a man or you're really hungry, this this is the challenge you need to take on. It's the best deal in town. You eat it in an hour. It's free. We give you a T-shirt keep you from doing laundry for an extra day, put your picture on the wall, and you get to brag to all your friends that you did it. That is humongous. Wow. Several people have done it, about one out of 10. We'll finish it, and we've sold nearly a thousand in you five years. Call an ambulance? No, sir. Wow. No, sir. Just a wheelbarrow. Yep, we just help people <laughs> out the door, but it's, uh, it's fun, and uh, it's taken down some big men, and uh, some smaller men have finished it. Here's my next relaxed tip for you. Get some nice herbal tea. Right before you go to bed, just make some, some nice tea. This happens to have chamomile and mint in it. Excellent for helping you relax at night. And also realize you want caffeine free because caffeine will stimulate the system. You wanna stay away from that right before you go to bed. Now you can also do this during the day. If you're a little bit flared up during the day, wanna relax a little bit, get some tea and drink it. Don't forget to drink that relaxed formula either. That's really important right before you go to bed. My tip for you today, relax. If you've watched our show any at all, you're going to see a name on our show, and that's Michael Davis, who's our producer, and Uptone Pictures. Well, we happen to be in Wake Forest at the home of Uptone Pictures, and I went, Michael Davis. Hey, Michael. <laughs> How you doing? Good. <laughs> you know what I love? I love people who do what they love and love what they do, and I know that you do that. Yep. And uh, so what I want to know from you, first of all, how did you... How did you decide? I mean, as a kid, were you taking pictures and all that kind of stuff? We used to, growing up, we used to do a lot of shows for our parents. And we grew up on this compound that had, um, I grew up in Brazil, and there were all these American families. That sounded a little scary, didn't it? Yeah. You grew up on a compound. Yeah, in Brazil. And there was a lot of, like, um, business kids, missionary kids, and all these people. All these Americans lived on this area. So I grew up with a lot of American friends. And my father was British. Uh, so I was the odd man out in a sense, and so I I really wanted to become American because they always made me be. We'd play uh, army or whatever, and I always got labeled the British guy, you know. Mm. And uh, so anyway, all of us got together a lot, and we used to have horses and all these animals, and we would put on shows for our, for the fan, for the parents. So we do these like horse shows and oh, that's cool. We do a circus or we did a haunted house, and we did all these things. And we would drag our parents through these ordeals, you know, looking back, they're pretty horrible, but well, they were a lot really of fun. early productions, early productions. Were, exactly. Yeah. And then in high school, uh, I had a friend of mine whose father bought him a camera 
And back in the day when it was a VHS machine about this big, yeah. and it was an extra bag that you had to carry, and then there was a big cable to the camera. <laughs> it wasn't even on the camera. Yeah. I mean, it was that big. And he, his dad used to come to the States and he bought it for him. And so he would do the camera work and I would do, I was the reporter. And we used to do these little newscasts and we'd go around interviewing people. And as a matter of fact, not long ago, we, he, I was in Orlando, Florida, and went to his house and we actually watched some of the stuff oh, that we had seen. Cool. It was so funny. We were laughing. So that's kind of how we got started, yeah. you know, and then going into college, that's what I wanted to do, you know, uh, work in television, get into t to movies, you know, now on our third feature film. And that's kind of a fun thing. So let's talk about that. You uh, started uh, with a film in Concord. We started in the uh, first film we did was called The Box for Rob. It's now on the film uh, festival circuit and it's won a couple of awards and we're really excited about it. Looking for distribution right now for it, talking to different people. Uh, but yeah, we shot that in Concord in 2010. Now you had some pretty great people in that movie. From the living dead right now is Irony Singleton who's right. in that movie. Yeah, pretty funny because the guy that wrote his name is Brett Gentile. I think you've had a chance to meet him. Yeah. Um, but Brett um, was on a shoot on a movie that's coming out now in March called uh, Seeking Justice with Nicolas Cage. And he was writing the script for Boxer Rob in New and he was in New Orleans to shoot that. And his, the guy that he plays with, uh, the scenes with, is Irony Singleton. Wow. And that's how they met. And then Brett called me and said, hey, Irony wants to, you know, I've talked to him, he wants to be in the movie. I offered him the part of Tim Berry and he'll do it. And I said, well, sign him up. Yeah. You know? So that's how we got Irony in. So we not only have him in The Walking Dead, but he's got a new movie coming out with Nicolas Cage next month. It's really cool what I've noticed with those those actors that uh, were, for example, in that movie. It's not so much about the money. It's about doing what they love and loving what they do. Exactly. Which is really cool. And then yeah. your next movie that you actually shot here in Wake Forest. Right. Called Destiny Road. Destiny Road. Destiny Road is almost finished. It's at the lab getting the final tweaks. And we have Daniel Zacapa, who is in the river on ABC on Tuesday nights. So wow. he's in it. And that show, I guess, is going pretty big. And yeah. He's, but it was awesome to have him. We had uh, Daniel Simonis from the uh, Disney's uh, uh, Wizards of Waverly. Yeah. And um, Tracy Dinwiddie from Supernatural on uh, CW. And uh, Zoe Myers, so probably the bigger names that were involved in oh, that, that project. That is cool. Yeah. So your next one? Well, right now we got a, we got a project that we are, we're partnering with a company out of L.A. And they, did, they shot this movie, and we're going to do all the post-production work on and that's called Don't Pass Me By. And it's all about, it's actually an interesting concept, which is don't let life pass you by, which mm -hmm. kind of goes in with what your show yeah. is all about. And it's about these different characters, similar in a way to Destiny Road, but it, we follow these different characters and how they end up deciding to do certain things so that life won't pass them by. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. And that's really important. We've got a kind of a time slot in our life. Yeah. And we can either sit by and watch that go by or we can become a part of it. Yeah. And you've decided to become a part of it. I'm trying. That's cool. <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's neat. So if you're interested in doing stuff like this, you got to realize you just got to step out of the boat and do it. Yeah. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is when Jesus is out walking on the water, the disciples are in the boat. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter, come and walk towards me. And as Peter stepped out onto the water, he was actually walking on the water, but then a storm brewed and just came up out of nowhere and Peter started to sink. And basically the moral of that story is this. When you're out walking on the water, the intention is to walk on the water. But what we tend to do in life is to do this. We tend to get our minds off of what we're intending and onto the circumstances around us. Uh, storms have nothing in, to do with anything uh, on walking in the water. If you're going to walk on the water, whether there's a storm or not, that really doesn't matter. What matters is the intention of what you're planning to do. And when you get your mind off of your focus, whether that's a job, a position, or your family, whatever that intention is, when you get your mind off of it and onto the storms around you, that's when you begin to sink. So make sure that your intention is where you need it to be. If you're intending to be a success in business, then set your intention on success in business. 
And when things come up around you that, that are gonna try to pull your attention away, try to pull your focus away, you've got to set your mind on the focus of where you wanna be. I love this watching cats. And when you look at cats, there might be a cat on the floor and he looks up at the top of the refrigerator and he's thinking, I need to go there. And cats are amazing because they'll look at that and all of a sudden just hit that area. They don't say, okay, well, I'm gonna plan this out here. I'm gonna plan to go here and then I'm gonna jump here. I'm gonna go there and then finally I'll get there. No, they set their intention on where they're going and then all of a sudden, bam, they're there. That's what you need to do in your life. Set your intention on where you wanna be. Don't worry about all the, the, the small things of how you're gonna get there. Set your intention there and you're gonna get there. This thing called life, loving life is wonderful. So join me as I love life together with you. We set our intentions on success, health, happiness, and let's just enjoy life. We are talking today about doing what you love and loving what you do and uh, stepping out of the boat and starting businesses and being in the thing that you love doing. And I'm with Joe O'Keefe today with Wine 101. Joe, thank you for letting me be here today. Well, thanks for coming to see us today. We're happy to have you. So you got into this. You were a great musician and did some stuff like that and then decided to get out of that. Well, I was working for a startup company out of Manhattan that uh, had its own music technology. And what was nice about that was when I approached that company about eight years ago and said, hey, you know, we've got kids now. It's, you know, we, we want to look for a better quality of life. We want right. to move to North Carolina. They said, well, that's fine. All I need is really the internet in an airport so they can get me to different gigs. And so I stayed with that. I built a recording studio in my house. And I did that for another five years, but I just, I found that I just, I missed the people interaction. Mm -hmm. And it actually used to embarrass my wife on walks around the neighborhood. She'd just say, you're just, you, you just, you can't talk that much. You just, you're, you're, you, can you just, yeah, please, you're, you're going to embarrass us. So, um, you know, we wonder, started, we started. if they're related to my family. <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> um, but no, we, um, we had great experience in New York. We used to go to a place called the Brooklyn Brewery, which I know many people in the Triangle are going to be familiar with the Brooklyn beers. And Brooklyn Brewery is an old matzo ball factory. It was just a great place where people could bring the food in. It wasn't yeah. a restaurant. You know, we used to go to the deli or we'd go to um, Frank Sinatra's favorite pizza place. It was called Grimaldi's right underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. And we'd swing through there in the car. And even after we had our, our first child, we'd bring her car seat in and pop her up on the picnic table in there and she'd be sleeping and we could hang out and, and visit in New York yeah. and not spend a lot of money. Yeah. So as we kind of evolved and decided we were gonna stay here in Wake Forest, we, we, we realized that there was kind of a vacuum for that. There were other wine shops in the area and they were great, but we were really looking for a place that people could come, learn about wine, hang out a little bit, not feel pressured to particularly, you know, buy anything in particular or, or whatever. But really, you know, the idea was to create a place where people can come and just relax and hang out. And, and it happens there. We are surrounded by some great local restaurants here right yeah. in our plaza and people do it all the time. They'll grab a sub or they'll grab some take out food or some Thai food and they'll bring it over and sit down and, and get a glass of wine out of the wine station or you know they can crack open a bottle we now have beer on tap as well so they can get a pint of beer and sit down and not feel the pressure of you know the the, the tips or the corking fees and, right. and all that kind of stuff but you know keep it a little bit more looser most of the time people come over and they do that before they go out to dinner they'll come over here they'll do our tasting maybe half a glass of wine or a half glass of wine and then they you know they move on to their dinner with their friends so you have regular tastings then that people can come to? Oh yeah, we have tastings every week, every Friday 5 to 8 and every Saturday 2 to 5. Um, we do most of the pouring ourselves. Sometimes we'll bring in reps to do the pouring, but it just it depends on what's available. For example, this bottle of wine I just, I just tasted a couple days ago. It's about a $30 um, Chardonnay from France and we'll be selling it for about $14.99 so we can, we can get some really good deals like that and, and, and share those savings along with the customers. And uh, that's just kind of how we work. I've, I've learned in the four years we've been here what people in Wake Forest really like to drink and try to focus on that and try to, you know, select the, the wines and the beer, you know, per their tastes and, and, and also price points. Well, thank you for letting us be here with you. Thanks for coming by and, and coming to see us, Tim. It's a pleasure to meet you. 
listen, if, you're, if you are looking for something, find people who are passionate about what they do. This guy seems to be passionate about what he does. Find those kind of people, and then you find what life is all about. You'll really love life then. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Loving Life. We've been at Wine 101. If you love wine, you better go there. Classic cars. Wasn't that cool seeing all those old cars and then coming here to Spinner's Grill? Listen, life is all about choices. You make choices every single day. Choose to love life. And choose to go to places who are local businesses. I love local businesses. Men and women who have stepped out of the boat and decided to start their own business and provide services that you can enjoy. Well, I'm quitting this now because I'm about ready to enjoy this three and a half pound burger here at Spinner's Grill. I'll see you on our next episode.